Go, 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 let's get it I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic So I cannot turn it on or off okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most I tell her little bitch, so extra oh. And my gun up on me, but I run up on me Niggas, they wanna fight, they some wrestlers hey, you know The team of four moves ahead Knowing what they had to do and they had one more match before completing this selection. Since that would take some time, they go off to train. Each one of them has their own separate training that they would do. Rin focused more on calming his mind with meditation and precise drills, while Isagi was more rampant, allowing his ego to take off and develop further. Nico worked more on developing his mind as well, and his eyes, so he could keep up with those two, as Tokimitsu, he kind of did his own thing, trying to build his confidence, slowly but surely. Eventually, a team of four does make it to them, with that being Kira, Nagi, Baru, and even Kunigami. All four of them would enter the room with Isagi, claiming that this is where it all would end. He would shrug them off, taking a similar shot to Ren, but with no curve at all. A half-field knuckleball. So, you're back already. Has it even been that long? And you brought some more ants to be crushed. Baru then steps to Isagi saying this time will be completely different. But Isagi walks off. I'll see you for soon. Make sure you don't disappoint me. With this match being declared, the players on the team met on the pitch in red and black as Ren stood at the forefront with the ball at his feet. This again... Really? Don't complain. Just end it quickly. They're not a threat to us at all. For once, this is something that we agree on. Ren and Isagi make a move in sync, shocking the players who were their opponents. Somehow, Ren's calm playstyle complemented Isagi's wild movements. The two of them ran right through the front line, making it to the center. Ren did so until Baru was face to face with him. I'll be taking this. The king then steps back while blocking the path of Ren, only for Ren to perform a quick elastico to get around him, saying that he's lukewarm. Now, he prepares to shoot, but Kira has seen this all before. So, as the ball curves through the air, it's blocked by Kira showing off his spatial awareness. Not this time. He smiles, but it soon fades, seeing Isagi watch the ball bounce. Our MC laughs in the face of his opponent as he places the ball right between his head and the keeper, earning them the first goal. Ren calls that a cheap trick to wait for the rebound, but Isagi claims it doesn't matter how he scores. As long as he can change 0 to 1, it wouldn't matter. This would cause some conflict between the two moving forward. So, on defense, it seems they were defending their opponents and each other. Kira's plan wouldn't work since Baru was the only real ball handler, he wouldn't be able to get through. Isagi stood behind him, blocking him off, causing him to awaken and rip through Isagi, scoring his own shot. He roars, claiming himself to be the king and the very best, and Isagi sits back on the ground before standing up. This guy can't be serious. A king playing football? If anything, he's more like a jester to me. Isagi sets up the ball and looks on ahead. If this is something all of you want to do, then be my guest. Isagi runs ahead alone, shocking them and flicking it over Nagi before trapping it. And then he spins to the opposite side, losing him. Now, Baru, of course, will try to guard him, but he's dropped to the ground easily. What the? His body. Has it always been this strong? Baru would turn and witnesses Kunigami and Kira blocking off the path of Isagi. Get the hell out of my way. Isagi performs laps blue dribbling, pulling them in before breaking right through them with a burst of energy. But this version of it was on a completely different level, as they stood no chance at all. Even Ren didn't know what this was. To be able to dribble like this and get open through four players, that was just insane. However, Kira still had one more plan, up his sleeve. And so... As Isagi was preparing his shot, well, he managed to get in the way. This caused Isagi to lift the ball in the air. He claims this wouldn't be a problem, 
But then he thought about one more player who had actually recovered and became a defender in this moment. Nagi was seen reaching in the air, using his black hole trap, only for Isagi to still rip a volley into the goal. Nagi then helps up Kira, claiming that this guy is a complete monster. From this point on, it becomes child's play for Isagi and Ren, who dominated in this match. We get to see more and more of Ren's true ego as he becomes more of a destroyer, with him scoring more goals in this match than Isagi. Now, they need to pick one more player. And actually, both players wouldn't care. And Tokimitsu couldn't decide either. So the three move on ahead, leaving it to Nico. Who could pick someone? But he had to think. Should he pick someone who could help support both of his two monsters that were on his team? No, that's not the point of Blue Lock. He'll pick someone who he can even learn from as Nagi would be picked. Now the team of five could move on. As they walk to a newly branded room, Jinpachi Ego appears on the screen. So, you are the first lumps of talent to make it this far. Well, if your talents outclass your peers by this much, why don't you see how they do against the real world of football? On the screens around them, each one of the world five players would appear as Ego tells them about luck, but Isagi doesn't want to hear it at all. Even if luck exists in this world, I won't need it. Talk about the angel of luck all you want, but remember this. Some of you were lucky to be born in Japan, but Japan was lucky someone like me was even born to save them. He walks out of the room with his blue eyes glowing from the reflection of the screens, and Ego spins in his chair looking to Anri, who questions why he lets Isagi do as he pleases. It's not that I let him. Simply, he's earned that right. He's produced goals like no other and has elevated his competition. As it stands, he would be the most perfect striker to utilize for Japan. However, she then turns her head. However, there is something that he's missing. You think so? What could it be? It's simple. Instinct. Watch this play here. Ego then replays one of Isagi's earlier matches. Most likely one of the 3v3 ones. You see that? There. He pauses for a moment. It's just for a fraction of a second. But, in this moment, he has to think about what to do. Most players, like Itoshi Rin, in this video here, as we see another clip. See? There's no thought. He does it. Because of his experience as a player and his instincts, he trusts them. Isagi doesn't have that. Even though he has played football for a while, he's always played relying on his thoughts and pure talent. He doesn't truly have the instinct of a world-class footballer. And soon, he'll even see that. Maybe a few days would go by until we see our five players again, now facing those from around the world. When stepping onto the pitch, Isagi notes that the air feels different. Ren does his usual shit talking to the players, but Isagi doesn't care for it at all. From the very beginning, the World 5 players relentlessly marked Isagi, their eyes locked on him as a target, as they positioned themselves strategically to nullify his every move. Loki, known for his impeccable speed, intercepted the path of Isagi with ease time and time again, leaving him amused, but also curious. So this is what you plan to do, to stop me. Don't make me laugh at all. Isagi performs his laps blue dribbling, getting through Loki, but running into Luna. Not a bad technique, but I've seen better from where I'm from. He rips the ball from Isagi, sending it to Cavazos. This is when the World 5 would begin to take over. They would score their first goal here, with Isagi becoming intrigued why they were playing so hard against him. Then... It all came together. Throughout this match, Isagi noted that he wasn't able to score at all, but even Ren was able to get a surprise shot, and so was Nagi, earning each one of them a goal. But he couldn't do anything of that matter, and as the match continued to progress, Isagi's frustration grew. His techniques, once reliable and effective in every situation, seemed useless against the sheer dominance of the world's players. 
Every attempt he had made was met with the resolute defense, leaving him isolated, falling into despair. Even with the six eyes, he wondered how he could even score. As he couldn't see it, he couldn't visualize any more goals. But now, he would begin to feel it. From his despair, birthed something like no other. The desire. The desire to win. To win more than anything. No more thinking. No more predicting and trying to see the goal. No more any of that. Now, this would be his only chance to act. Seeing Nagi with the ball, Isagi dropped back, letting him go ahead. Isagi was still being marked by Loki until he ran by Kira and Tokimitsu, losing him. What the? Isagi then watched as Nagi began trapping the ball while dribbling. With Silva in the way, he couldn't shoot, so he sent it over to Ren, who was their best option. The younger brother of Itoshi Sei then opened his body to receive it, but Adam Blake was having none of that at all. He stood in front of it, trapping it with his chest, and as it bounced just a little bit off of it, it was shot into the net by Isagi. No one even saw this coming and saw him moving into this position. As now he was standing there, leaning over, everyone's jaw would be dropped, causing Isagi to turn to them slightly to where they could only see one of his eyes. What's wrong? You didn't expect me to score? If I can't make any of my own goals, then I'll just take everyone else's. From this point on, it became clear that Isagi's constant development was his most scary trait. As the World 5 players began to have to struggle to even stop him, Still, they won as they only needed one more goal as the final score would be 5-4. to four. But, Loki, well, he was the one to score it. And as it ended, he saw that Isagi was standing still. Luna would note that he might be the scariest one from the new Gen 11. Not because of his skill or anything like that, but because of those eyes and his adaptability. It's clear that he doesn't have enough experience to even challenge them yet on the world-class stage, but if he somehow gains the experience of even one world-class player, he will be a formidable opponent. They would leave the room in anger, wishing they had one more, just one more chance. But this is where Ego begins to belittle them. He shows them the clips of their last match where they had opportunities to win, but they didn't. And since they were the strongest team assembled so far, this was to be expected. However, they exceeded some of his expectations by pushing past what they had thought was their limits. Now, let's say a couple days would go by as the U20 versus Blue Lock match would be announced. With Itoshi Sei being on Japan's team. And he also hears about Isagi being within Blue Lock, which would shock him. As another player from the new Gen 11, he didn't expect their final member to even be a part of something so comical in a way, as at this point, no one took Blue Lock serious. So, he has the coach of his team invite Isagi to play with him. As back in the facility, we see Isagi and Rin tearing through their opponents by themselves in order to score. They barely use the other players on their team, only focusing on each other. Some might even think this was weird. But the two have figured out that they work quite well together. Even if they didn't want to at all, they couldn't deny the results that it produced. Their synergy on the field was undeniable, as Ren's tactical prowess and Isagi's raw talent complemented each other perfectly. And together, they became a dynamic duo that consistently outperformed the other teams. Their dominance in the 5v5 matches becomes an undeniable fact that those two were indeed the strongest. Even when facing Shido, Nagi, Baru, and other players of that caliber, they stood no chance at all. In each one of the matches, Isagi was able to tap into more and more of the power that the Six Eyes held. It almost became second nature to him to use them in every play, in every match, as his stamina increased even more while using them, to the point where he could just keep them activated in a way. Isagi knows to himself that because of this devastating loss that he had faced, he's awakened another side. Before, he had believed to be the strongest due to the fact that he had never lost. 
Something like that never even crossed his mind. But now, after feeling the agony of defeat, he's truly awakened. The limitations that he had placed on himself are now gone. He can now see beyond his former self, breaking through that shell. Because of this, Isagi keeps becoming stronger and stronger in every aspect. This all leads to the day right before the team is announced. He goes into a room with one screen, as Ego, of course, appears smiling. Now, Isagi, it seems you have to choose. As Itoshi Sei has used his own leverage as a player to offer you a spot on Japan's team. So, I'll let you decide who you wish to play for.